Now we're going to look at the third party add-on to QuickBooks, Transaction Pro Importer, as our fourth option for importing data into QuickBooks. Uh, the first time you use TPI, if you are using it with a QuickBooks file, you do have to be logged in as the admin so that you can grant it permission to the file, of course. Uh, when you do grant it permission to the file, so if we come in here to Integrated Applications, it comes across as Bay State Consulting. And I always say to allow the application read and modify, uh, as well as to allow the application access to the Social Security numbers, credit card information, etc. So it just gives it information to all the fields, right? No limitations there. Okay, so Transaction Pro is a third-party application, which means it's an additional fee. Um, if you're using it for your firm or for you know your consulting uh, company, then of course you, it's a one-time fee that you pay every couple of years. They have upgrades that you can buy. Um, if you have several people at your firm, they do have some options. Um, for a server edition, if you have like your file hosted or your files hosted, etc. And then if you are an end user that's trying this um, for the minimal fee <laughs> that it costs to use this pro or to have this product, um, it is a huge time savings. So again, the time when I go into Transaction Pro Importer, uh, generally, honestly, I use this for the majority of our clients since we work with mostly enterprise clients and um, enterprise clients tend to have a lot more data right and so when we're importing a lot of data this tends to be the direction to go all right um, so we're not going to be in demonstrating here how to import data using TPI but I do want to show you the fields available so similar to what we've been looking at in some of the other options okay so the first thing that we come into we we log into transaction pro importer this is your starter screen you're going to browse and pick the, the Excel document that you have set up. Similar to paste from Excel, you want to have the Excel document set up in your different columns already. Then we choose the sheet. Um, again, similar to import from Excel. Okay. Then we choose our in, import type. Right. So you can see here I have invoice, um, I have bills or cre credit memo is a separate import. I have bills, I have vendor credit, separate import, right? So you have to import those separately. Um, and then we get into our list down here. So I have my customer list, which we're going to take a look at first. Okay. One of the options you want to make sure to set as well is you want to come in here and enable custom fields so that you have access to those custom fields. Now there are some other preferences in here. Again, when we're dealing with uh, Transaction Pro Importer, a lot of it's on not only a list level, but it's also on a transaction level, uh, hence Transaction Pro. <laughs> um, so uh, there's a lot of fields and options that you can possibly use in there that are really important that we, we'd look at in other webinars. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say next. Now it pulls in for me and it tells me, right, my different columns that I have set up in here. Um, you have to make sure if you do have a header right on your Excel spreadsheet, meaning the first line is your header columns, you want to make sure that you have it checked off that this file has header names. Okay, and then it goes through and it takes us through our mapping. So I'm going to bring QuickBooks up as a background since it's less stuff there. So basically what we're saying here is we have two columns. We have our import file column and we have our static value column. So the import file column we list, right, we choose one of our columns from our Excel spreadsheet, similar to our mapping that we did on import from Excel. Or if we want to have some kind of static value in here, we can add a static value. When would you use a static value? Something like perhaps um, you only use one sales tax rate for all your customers, right? So we can do a static value there. Or um, I don't know, everybody's going to have the same information in the, in the custom field, which, you know, why do we have a custom field if there's the same information? But again, you, you know, generally the static value when we're using the static value is when we're dealing with transactions, but you can do that in here. So essentially what we want to look at is we just want to look at the fields available. So with customer, we have customer name, if it's active, inactive, company name, first name, last name, contact, phone number, fax number, alternate phone number, alternate contact, right? So those fields are here. We have email, bill two, line one, line two, line three, line four. So in this example, we still would have to have the company name as bill two, line one. 
You do have the ability to separate out city, state, and, state, and zip into different cells. So that's another thing that a lot of our customers like when they're importing it. Again, don't go in and import, you know, 100,000 lines at a time. We like to import about 1,000 lines max, but your first time doing it, you want to import four or five, maybe 20, just to see what it looks like in QuickBooks so you make sure to test it first. Um, we have our ship to information, her customer type or terms, sales rep, resale number, price level, account number, credit limit, payment method, any notes, sales tax information, job information. We can import the credit card information through here and then we have our custom fields, okay? So the preferred payment method we don't see in here, right? That's not one of the, the options in there and the preferred send method we don't see in here as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch on back, choose my vendor list. And go ahead and again, I'm just using the same Excel spreadsheet. I just wanna see the fields available. So we have vendor name, company name, first, last, contact, alternate contact email, print on check as, address line one would still be the company name again. City state zip can be in three different cells. We have our vendor type or terms, tax ID number, if it's eligible for 1099, account number, our credit limit, notes. We do have the pre-fill account. That's the first time I've seen it, but there's only one. Um, and then the bill rate level is here, which is great. And then of course we have that special field. Okay. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at invoices. Again, in our future webinars, we're gonna have a lot more detail about the invoice entry for the detailed invoices, so you wanna pay attention to that. Uh, but for now, you can understand. So we have our customer name, our transaction date, our reference number. Notice that the reference number is required here, okay? PO number, terms, class, template name. If we want it to be printed, we don't have it to be emailed here. Ship date, bill to information is similar to what we've seen in other areas phone, fax. So these are fields that we don't see, right, when we're importing uh, or when we set up the invoice itself. We don't see these fields on the invoice, so they have some additional fields in there. Contact name, first name, last name, rep, due date, ship method, customer message, memo, credit card information can be imported here. <clears throat> the item, right? And so this is maybe where we would use a static value because we're always using open. So there's no reason to have an extra column that says for every line open. So we could just make a static value of open. Same with quantity, we could make a static value of one. Um, description, if you don't fill in a description, it'll pull it from the item, what you have set up at the item level. <clears throat> that's just a little tip there. Price, if it's pending, okay, that's one of the options here. Um, we don't have that option when we did paste from Excel. Item line class, service date, FOB, customer account number can be there. Sales tax item, here's the to be emailed down here. Okay, We have the other one, other two, and other three. Remember when we saw those other, other was on the header area, other one was on the uh, columns and other two on the columns as well. Again, fields we didn't see available when we were uh, doing paste from Excel. You can choose your AR account, so you can have multiple AR accounts in here. You don't have to paste it twice. You can do it all from one. And then our special field and our sales tax code. All right, coming back in, we're gonna take a look at our credit memo. So the other side of AR. We have pretty much the same fields, customer transaction date, right? If you're looking down here, ship ship date, bill to information, ship to information, all the way down here, customer message item, etc. So when we're importing it, why we have the credit memo as separate? Uh, because when we're putting in our quantity here, right? Remember it was negative one when we did paste from Excel. Now it's positive one and a positive price as well. Because when it's importing, it's, you know, you think about when you're importing using Transaction Pro, you think about how you would enter it if you're doing it manually. That's how it usually works, okay? So we have our item line class, service date is here. Um, some of those additional fields that we saw that we didn't see in the paste from Excel. 
um, other one, other two, which again, we don't really like to use anyway, but they're there, and then special fields. So very similar. Uh, now let's go ahead and take a look at our bill. <coughs> On the bill, we have the vendor transaction date reference number, the bill due date, the terms, no discount on here, right, because we can't put information in there. It's based on the terms that we have. The memo, which is the header memo that we, we showed in, when we were entering a bill, not the line item memo that's down below here. The address information, the vendor account number, which again wasn't there, right, when we were entering a bill that's there when you set up a bill in QuickBooks and our other methods, but you can put that here. We can associate it with an expense account. So here are all the expense account information. Um, and then we have our items information. So again, we could choose a static item for open and then which AP account we're entering it against. And then when we look at a vendor credit, so it's not a bill credit here, it's called a vendor credit. Okay, and same, it's pretty similar fields. All right, and same thing as with a credit memo, when you're entering in the vendor credit here, you want it to be a positive quantity and a positive amount. Okay, and so in some of our, um, in some of our uh, examples that we're about to go through, we're not gonna be using Transaction Pro Importer in this, uh, for importing information in any of our examples, any of our scenarios that we run through, because we're do, we're kind of getting this them into you know list information is the primary area that we're talking about, or just summary open balances, which is pretty simple information, right? So most of the time we're going to be, or the entire time we're going to be using one of the other options that we've already discussed. But it's really good to know that Transaction Pro importers here. I definitely suggest you stick around for one of our future webinars when we talk about how to import more detailed line items. This tool is a very simple tool <laughs> that can get you a lot of consulting hours. Okay. Okay, so what are the pros and cons of uh, Transaction Pro Importer? So the pros, you can do lists and transactions. Uh, you do get an error log with codes and they have an entire support site that helps you with the different errors and you know it's been out there for a number of years. Um, even though it's in 6.0, I mean I think the last time 5.0 came out was three or four years ago. So <clears throat> it's not just six years old, it's a long, it's been around for a long time. <laughs> um, but the error logs are great and their support site is great for helping you with errors. You can save your mapping so that, again, if you're importing 20,000 customers and you want to do 1,000 customers at a time, uh, then you can save your mapping. It makes it very easy to import You know your next list, your next sheet, your next sheet from Excel. <clears throat> you can, you can uh, do the importing in multi-user mode, which is helpful. Um, sometimes with our customers, they have a quick changeover, right? They'll be moving over from like a NetSuite as an example, and they don't have access to their NetSuite file anymore. We get all their NetSuite information into Excel, and then we put open balances in QuickBooks, and we'll let Transaction Pro Importer start to import things in the background, right? So if we're importing, I don't know, open AR, but they need to be able to put in their AR, you know, their invoices that are happening today, we'll put in open AR for them, uh, or I'm sorry, we'll allow them to enter in their transactions and function in QuickBooks today while we're slowly pushing data into the system, okay? Um, so this is kind of a pro slash con. So it does run a lot slower. When you're looking at if you imported a thousand lines uh, for or a thousand customers, it takes about a half a second per customer, maybe 0.3 seconds per customer, depending on, because it goes through every single customer field. However, this actually leaves us with a lot less data corruption when when we're dealing with you know after we've gotten the data in, because it goes slow. It's kind of like you know you think about like you know trying to pack stuff into a suitcase, right? If you pack super fast, it's going to be messy. If you kind of pack slower, then it'll be a little bit cleaner. And, you know, we like the cleaner. I'd rather go slow and be happier in the end. Um, all right, so cons, credit memo and invoice, you do have to do separate imports for those. That's not really a huge con, but 
you know, we want to bring that up as well as bills and vendor credits. Those are separate. So you have to have them on separate Excel spreadsheets. You can't do it at once. Um, you do need to create your own Excel files. Uh, they do have some sample files available on their website, but it's not as readily available. You have to go download, um, download it, a zip file and all that. There's no undo. As with any of these, there's no undo, right? You have to do a backup first. Um, they do have in the settings though, they do have the option to validate the file before importing. I don't really suggest doing this, I mean, unless it's a small file, because if you have to do this every single, it basically runs through the entire process, right? So let's think it takes 0.2 seconds per thousand, you know, it goes, or 0.5 seconds per thousand. Um, so it goes through the entire import, finds all errors, tells you the errors, and then you have to go through it again to re-import. So it takes twice as long, but the option's there. Um, so it's kind of like an undo, but not really. And of course, con, there is an additional cost to it, but again, the cost is so minimal. Uh, you know, an hour, maybe two hours of your consulting time, what you would bill out to one client, and you can use it over and over and over again. So not really a con, but a little bit.